Jolie here, four seconds out with Anthony Manning, Remy Boxhill here at Bromford, Birmingham on your doorstep. Remy, how are you? First meet you there. Sound good, thanks, mate. Yeah. Sweet. Anthony, how are you? I'm all well, man. Just happy about today, the turnout today. Um, obviously, Remy was on the um, pads and that, and a few of the kids come out, so happy about the turnout, man. What's your plans for Remy? Obviously, you've created this day here, literally on your, both of your doorstep, round the corner from the Manning's gym. Uh, what, what's your plans for Remy? What's the future looking like? Obviously, this is sort of a big day to get his name out there as well. Yeah, so Remy's 18 years old, um, just turned, no, he's, he's 19, so he's just, just turned. Um, he's had under 40 fights. And um, to be honest with you, the sky's the limit with him because all he's doing is just it's just progressing, progressing, progressing. Uh, so he's going to go back into the championships this season. Hopefully he's going to win a national title and probably next season dominate it. Um, you know, he's still young, he's fresh. Um, so the sky's the limit with him, he's working hard. So look at turning pro at the age of 21, 22, if that's his, um, yeah, yeah, if, if that's okay with him. And then hopefully by then we would have built a massive fan base. We would have, um, the city will know about him, you know what I mean? And, uh, and obviously the promoters and managers will be on board as well. I want to talk about where you started, why you started, but obviously he's just mentioned the city will know about you in a few years. What's your plans with like getting known in Birmingham? Because obviously it's no secret, Birmingham should have more boxers with bigger names uh, than they do at the moment. What's your plan and do you want Birmingham to be behind you like a lot? I know he's just mentioned off camera that he wants to like go door to door sales, get loads of people, get a bit backing behind you from Brum. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like I say, it's important to have people behind you supporting you. Yeah, it's a massive thing when you when you when you walk out and you see the people behind you. It's just motivating. You know what I mean? Getting your city behind you, your own community. It's important. Um, like today, the turnout's been nice. I appreciate everyone who came out of it. Um, came out to um, see me. It means a lot. Um, but yeah, in the future, definitely. Um, obviously, you got got to get your your area with your aboard first, then your city then the UK, then that's when you start going international in the future, man. <laughs> All in good timing though, definitely. And obviously just mentioning the area, getting behind you, whereabouts in Birmingham are you going to want to fight? The big, um, the big arenas, man, hopefully. Obviously, um, I'm still amateur at the minute. I do a lot of work with Anthony. But, um, I'm training at Second City as well. That's where I do my amateur bouts. But um, like Ant said, the sky's only the limit. I'm only young still, but hopefully in the future, shoot off hard work and dedication Anthony I'll come to you quickly obviously you, you have a plan of where he's going to fight I, I can assume a lot of people watching this are going to be from Birmingham so have you got any venues in mind uh, first off we start off with the amateur boxing um, obviously boxes out of second city uh, try and get him as busy as possible enter into every competition uh, get him on all the club shows uh, regarding um, if anyone wants to put him on their show you know we can pay them put him on the show, get him more experience. The more experience he gets as an amateur, put him in good stead for when he turns pro. But when he turns pro, obviously we'll have to look at what's on the table when he turns pro. Hopefully his profile's through the roof by then. And obviously we, we, we know our own worth by then. And uh, and then obviously we can, uh, you know, bring fans in, into arenas at, at like Barclay Arena, uh, the Blues Ground, the Villa Ground. You know, we just bring the city with us. So we, we've got big plans. Uh, it's just the start. We, we, we only started three months ago uh, and, we're, and we're working. We're in good stead. We're in good stead for what we're doing. Who do you support? Um, Birmingham City. Okay, right on. <laughs> um, on, that note, um, on that note, obviously, Baz, the leading um, key right on firm, is here, really? is here today. So obviously, Birmingham, they, they will support us um, through, through what we're doing. Um, obviously, we are trying to do things for the um, for the good, do you know what I mean? And it's all it's all a matter of time. Let's go back to the beginning then. How old were you? I believe you were, was it eight when you started? Seven. Uh, why did you start? How long like have you been taking it seriously for things like that? Um, started when I was seven. Oh, hold it. Started when I was seven. My, fa uh, my father took me down to the gym. Um, now 19, so what's that, like 12 years? Um, always been a love of boxing, but obviously always in the gym, always training hard, just non-stop. Um, like now you just, gotta, you just gotta keep stepping it up because you gotta be doing stuff what your opponents ain't doing. You know what I mean? Because that's what makes you the champion and that's what makes you the 1% different to the other people. So it's important to do what they're not doing. And how did you two come to meeting each other? Oh, it's mad because um, when I was 14 years old, his, uh, his dad gave me a job. Uh, he said, you, you wanna help me do this drive? 
I'll give you 50 quid. And I, so, so I was like, yeah, sweet. At them days, I was just walking around on the man out doing not much. And then like, obviously I went through boxing myself. I knew of him because he boxed at East Side at one point. And obviously I knew of him from the estate. I was good friends with his brother. Um, so yeah, I knew of him from the area as well. Uh, growing up, I know his mum, his dad. And um, I reached out to him and I says to him, listen, I'm in a position I can help you. Um, uh, can you come and have a meeting? We had a little chat, me and his old man and himself. Spoke about a few things that was missing. F spoke about a few things that I could do for him. And if he was happy for me to jump on board and add on to his team that he's already got. Uh, Day was happy with it. So we started to move forward with small steps. Obviously, we've got massive waves. But obviously, we understand that we've got to start, start, start and use things as guinea pigs and use things as um, stage one, stage two, stage three. And at the moment, we're looking on cracking this estate. It's a deprived estate uh, where we both come from, uh, we, where we both used to hang around, where all the kids are looking up to us and uh, reaching out to us for advice and guidance. And, and at the moment, we're happy to stay here and, and stay humble in our community and build here until we go professional. And then obviously we want everyone behind us. What, what are your plans on, like, as you just said, cracking the estate, obviously, <laughs> literally, since we started the interview, or just before, like, about five people come past, you know them all, like, you know quite a few people from around here, like, how, other than, like, putting this ring outside today, how else are you going to get people to get behind him from the local area that you don't know? Okay, then, so it starts off with a lot of the um, businesses in the area, obviously, we can get them to sponsor him, so that'll be something that we're working on at the moment, so all these companies that are in the area that communicate in there, to pay him, so he then be paid to come to the community. Uh, obviously, after that, then we start to do letterbox drops, poster drops. Uh, obviously, we do events. You know, we get involved, hands on. Uh, we go to any sort of events that they might be doing and join on support. Um, we just got to come round here, do documentaries, film some real stuff, uh, stuff that's happened, stuff that's going on, stuff that we're a part of. And just like today, come round, give food to the community, um, uh, invite people who have never been to this estate before, like journalists, media, uh, and, and, and just basically let them know that Remy Boxer's from Brantford in Birmingham and he's, and he's a, a community lad. And um, w when, he, when he's boxing, people show up and, and come and support him. Remy, I'll come to you now then. Obviously, you're still early on in your career, but you've, well, you've been boxing for 12 years, as we just said. I'm sure you know boxing's a business and you've got to market yourself in order to get to the big stage. How have you sort of thought about how you're going to do that? How, how do you plan to market yourself? Because without a big name these days in boxing, like it's, it's very hard to get big fights and become a, a, a big boxer. Um, yeah, it's important. You've got to put yourself out there. Like you say, um, I ain't got it on now, but I've got RB tracksuits. you got to get yourself out there, you know what I mean? Remy Boxer, definitely. But um, sponsorships, getting yourself out, having people behind you. It helps a lot. It help. It lets you do something. Gives you the advantage. Do you know what I mean? So that extra training or travels or supplements. That's that one percent other people haven't got as well. But it's important because, like you say, it's got to, sometimes now you've got to sell tickets as well. So it's just like it's just one one stress of that I can get them tickets gone. You know what I mean? Sell out big shows. Um, hopefully get the whole area behind me. Then, like we said earlier, the city. Then obviously. Um, country like like you say I'm only, I'm only 19 I'm still amateur so obviously when I'm turned pro all in all in good time prepared and what way are you at the moment what way do you plan to be in the next sort of year are you going to stay the way you are at now obviously I'm growing still you still got to fill out but I'm 69 kilo at the minute I'm 69 kilo at the minute but um I'll just let I'll just let my body I, I can't stop my body do you know what I mean <laughs> I just got to grow into the man I'm going to grow into and we'll see what weight we're at then what sparring have you been getting up to? Obviously, Anthony is well connected. Have you sparred anyone that people will know? No, I haven't. Because obviously, I'm st only just started, and I'm still I'm sparring at my, um, what's it called, my amateur gym, Second City. But um, yeah, I got good sparring. We got like no, the likes of Niall Farrell, who's GB level, so that's top sparring. We we'll go down to the pros as well. Got a good lad, Innocent. So yeah, man, definitely got some good sparring. I'll put you on the spot here then. Uh, n you don't have to s necessarily have met him, but who do you think is the best boxer out of Birmingham right now? <laughs> there's, only one, there's only one answer. Remy <laughs> Buxill, man. Remy <laughs> Buxill, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know that. What about you? What about you? 
Uh, to be honest with you, um, boxing in Birmingham, I'm going to say uh, Casey. Um, I've sp Benjamin. Yeah, Casey Benjamin. I've shared a lot of rounds with him. I know his potential. Obviously, we came through the amateurs together. He's a good friend of mine. Um, I know what he's capable of doing um, in line for the British. And, and not only that as well, he's just got a TV deal now with um, Hennessy Sports. So I see Casey uh, dominating now. As long as he lets his hands go, um, he'd definitely be a force to be recognised. His age as well on his side. So... I think he's got a t top 10 ranking now, so I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at cases to definitely have the British title real soon. Uh, Channel 5, Hennessy Sports. I know we're still so, so early on, but it's, it seems like an ideal platform. And would that be something you'd be interested in in the future? Yeah, def definitely. Um, like you say, the, the be win these national titles, hopefully get onto this GB, do it that way. If not, look out for them big um, promoters, the biggest one you can get and big platforms and we'll just go from there. Anthony, um, I want to speak to you now about the gym, your plans with the gym. Um, we've spoken before and you've mentioned how you want to do things differently. Just talk a bit about that. Yeah, so um, over my experience of being a professional, I realised that I used to go to everywhere for different services and there was not a standout facilities in Birmingham. So there was a lot of deprived backstreet boxing gyms, no funding. Um, there was no real backing behind them. And uh, we're the second biggest city, so I thought, this is crazy. Um, I thought, why is no one getting behind the city? And with my connections and my, net, my network and the people who I know and my ideas, I just thought, you know what, let me sit down, put things in pen to paper and start working. So I start looking at what all the elite fighters are doing and what I've been doing throughout my training camps. And I put them all together. I thought to myself, let's just have it all under one roof, a one-stop shop where you can come, accommodation, chauffeurs, media outlets, physios, nutrition, ice baths, saunas, cryotherapy, strength conditioning, supplements. We just cover all aspects and we're still growing now. Like the amount of um, companies and brands that are obviously uh, communicating with us now that want to get on board and really give us a push is giving us, putting us in good stead uh, for the future um, to put Birmingham on the map. And the fighters that come down there, to, to be honest with you, World-class facilities, that's all they say. World-class training as well. Uh, everyone that's come down there, they say they know they know, they know that what I know what I'm doing. Uh, they know that the facilities is outstanding, and that they definitely love to come back. Um, so yeah, man, we look forward to what Manning's boxing and training camp can bring to Birmingham. But I've got a 10-year goal. Obviously, I don't really want to disclose it and talk too much about it on camera. But it's working. I'm in, I'm in good stead. Everything that I've said has happened, and everything that I will continue to stay will uh, say will continue to happen. Uh, God willing. Do you think Remy's a huge part of that? And as you just said, putting Birmingham on the map is, I'd, I'd uh, think that's the end goal, sort of the 10 year aim kind of thing. Is, it, is, it, is that the, the aim? And do you think Remy's going to be a part of that? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, Remy's just um, uh, like a passion for me. Uh, I see myself in him because we come from the same neighbourhood. So it, it was like myself at the age of 18, 19, starting boxing, you know, uh, having to learn myself on my own, you know, knock on people's doors and ask questions and not really know too much. Uh, and like believe, believe in an amateur boxing club that at the end of the day was only there to, you know, pay my subs and do a little bit of training. There was no real like nurturing and guidance from that. So for myself and Remy, it's more of a, like a passionate thing where I help him and I expect nothing back from it except for him to do well and become a better man. Uh, my 10 year goal is more of a business um, and more of a, um, a kind of like a, a Birmingham standout facilities. It's not, it's not an independent fighter because at the end of the day, when he's going to grow his wins and spread them, if he ends up in Vegas, I wish him all the best. Um, obviously, I'll be on his journey as far as he needs me. And then obviously after that, um, you know, I wish him all the best with that, but I'm here supporting him until the end. Uh, what style do you possess for people that don't know? Pardon? What style do you possess? Southpaw, orthodox, power puncher? Orthodox, um, you just have to adapt to other people, do you know what I mean? I've got my own style, obviously. Um, but yeah, you just got to adapt to other people. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm boxing, I've got all, the st all styles. I can go a bit of Southpaw, I can go orthodox, but like I say, I ain't like that, I'm humble and grounded, um, but yeah, I'm confident in myself. When you do start making ring walks in Birmingham, um, what tunes is it going to be? Are we going to have Jake Howe Mist or someone from Birmingham uh, walking you out? Yeah man, definitely them, but if not man, it's, um, it's Meat Mills.
Yeah, man, definitely. Not dreams and nightmares. Yeah. Cool. All right, I'll end it now. But uh, yeah, thank you both for your time. Uh, I've enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully, I can come down to the gym soon, and and we can uh, do some big things in Birmingham yourself. Obviously. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you over at the gym. Obviously, when we get some of the elite fighters down, obviously we'll stay in contact. Uh, you can come down and see some of their training. I know you're already in talks with them already, but uh, yeah, look out for Manning's Boxing and Training Camp because like I say again, we started throughout the pandemic and uh, moving forward, we're moving forward with intent to uh, obviously you know put Birmingham on the map so um, the, the casual fans can see us and they know who we are and what we do. Just before we go then, who else is at the gym right now? Um, who are you training? Who's there? Uh, at the moment, we're in talks with a few different professionals, um, away fighters and home fighters. Uh, the likes of like um, Lee Salby is probably going to be our next uh, elite fighter that will be over at our facilities. Uh, obviously, he's a um, former world champion, uh, still got the potential to win more world titles. And it'll be a pleasure to have him along with the other world champions that we've had at our facilities. There we go. Thank you both for your time and uh, thanks for speaking to Seconds Out.